everybody? I'm Silvahara Pettyana, and this is another edition of my show. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of community. It is more evident today, after experiencing the pandemic, stay-at-home orders, isolation, how important family and community is in our lives. Because if it weren't for family and community and connections, I think, I know personally, I would have probably lost my mind. And speaking to so many of my friends and family members, it is true for them that the fact that we have been able to stay in touch, even via phone, even through digital connections and virtually, it is what has kept us, most of us, really focused on being healthy and happy, somewhat happy during these trying times. And part of the reason I want to talk about community is because I, as many of you know, have spent quite a bit of time in the last 10 years in the world of entrepreneurship. And one of the things that is often talked about in the world of entrepreneurship is the importance of having a community, a tribe. These are like-minded people that you can spend time with, that you can confide in, that you can draw support from. And every single entrepreneur or every single person who's creating a brand is looking for their tribe and looking for their community, the like-minded people that they can interact with, whether online or in person, now with the pandemic virtually. And it wasn't until I dug a little deeper into my personal life and in my history and my own life and my own past that I realized that the Armenians have been deeply rooted in community. We are all about family. And one of the things that we have, and we are so blessed to have, is this idea of community no matter where we are. Nothing actually describes that idea more than a quote from William Soroyan. I should like to see any power of the world destroy this race. The small tribe of unimportant people whose wars have all been fought and lost, whose structures have crumbled, literature is unread, music is unheard, and prayers are no more answered. Go ahead, destroy Armenia. See if you can do it. Send them into the desert without bread and water. Burn their homes and churches. Then see if they will not laugh, sing and pray again. For when two of them meet anywhere in the world, see if they will not create a new Armenia. The relevance of this quote, obviously referring back to the 1915 genocide that, that caused 1.5 million Armenians to perish, that is the background and the context of that quote. But what that quote also says is that this group of people, this race of people, no matter where we end up, when we meet, no matter where in the world, we already have this embedded idea of community and family into our DNA. It is so incredibly important for us to understand what makes that work and why that's important. And one of the people who is a, at the forefront of nurturing this idea of community within the organizations and also among young people, particularly Armenians, in Los Angeles is my great friend, Silvana Vartanian. Thank you for joining us. She is a powerhouse because guess what? She's a mother of three young men. And we know being a mom is the hardest job on the planet. So I, I'm my head's already off to you. And she is incredibly active in the community. And four years ago, she started an organization uh, called Neruj, and through the Western Diocese of the Armenian Church. And if I'm getting this wrong, please correct me, Silvana. Got it. Uh, do I, did I get this right? Okay. So she's joining us today to talk about a little bit about, about the organization, a little bit about what their mission are, mission missions are, and also talk a little bit about the importance and the power of community, particularly in these times, and how we, even if you're not Armenian and you're listening to it how we can nurture uh, more opportunities and more ways of creating community around us. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Silva, for having me. Tell me a little bit about why you, st 
became a part of this organization because I feel like yours um, was intentional. It was a intentional effort to connect uh, professionals to young up and coming students and a way to make sure that this idea of community continued to build. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, well, the whole concept came out very organically. Um, because I'm involved in so many other committees at the Western Diocese, um, the Archbishop Hovnan Dardevian asked me how we could bring more youth in. He said, let's, let's call the youth in and see what we can do because we need more youth involved in the church. The church, um, particularly since the genocide, has been a hub in every community that the Armenians have dispersed, in, dispersed into because um, that's where everybody gathers and um, we wanted to, we invited, oh, sorry. That's okay. We invited, <laughs> we invited um, various young professionals, college students, and um, other young couples in the community, and basically presented all the different projects going on at the diocese and told them, you know, we have a scholarship fund where we help out schools, Armenian schools, and help families stay there when they can't afford it. Uh, we have Agape Circle, which is an outreach program. Uh, we help out Children's Hospital in particular, the Eye Project there, and um, various other programs through the diocese. And so we presented this to the young generation to see what it is that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And they were very interested in actually doing something like this, where professionals like themselves and young parents could meet other like-minded Armenian families and other like-minded professionals. And also at the same time, because they had struggled um, with their own career choices and how to, how to make a decision for their career path, they wanted to mentor the next generation. So um, the concept of Nedush came up. And Archbishop Hovnam Derderian came up with the name. Ned, which means inner strength in Armenian. So Ned Ki Uj. And um, we're here. Our mission is to basically empower these young professionals by giving them a platform to network with each other and also pay it forward to the next generation. And we've had in the last four years several events at um, the diocese and at St. Leon Cathedral, where we bring panels of professionals together and they talk about their journey, how they overcame hardships, and it's people from all different walks of life. I mean, we've had attorneys, we've had surgeons, we've had um, journalists, producers, people in entrepreneurs, because Armenians by nature have a great entrepreneurial heart. And we all want to forge our own path, and we're amazing at it. They've been really successful. I mean, I, I came to the last one before the pandemic, and you had close to 100 and some odd people there. And um, and this is a, was a very engaged audience that wanted to know a lot more um, from the panel, uh, who spent several hours talking about their journey. Um, what has been the driving force because these these things are so much work um and all of all of the people who are um involved uh are doing this um as a community service they're doing it on a volunteer basis uh what is the driving force in being involved with something like this um, it's basically what you started off with earlier it's we are a community and we need we need this and there's so many Armenians in Los Angeles, um, but it seems that even though there's so many of us and most of the, the kids do go to Armenian school and they do have that connection or they go to scouts and other um, sporting events um, that Armenians host, there isn't anything afterwards. Like there isn't that unity to help and that networking. And, and we all need that because we are entrepreneurial by nature. So mm -hmm many of the next generation is going to start their own business and they need, they need somebody in marketing to help them market that business. They need an accountant to help keep their books in line. Um, they need maybe a real estate agent to help them find a you know, brick and mortar place to actually have their business. So what better way to do it than keep it in the community and empower each other and make us better versions of ourselves working together. 
Yeah. Um, so there, it's important. And these kids, they don't get to meet each other because once they start working somewhere, it's very hard for them to make new friends and um, stay within the community and kind of help the community grow into mm-hmm. a stronger stronger force that would actually benefit our own country and America. I mean, this only makes, if our communities are all strong individually, then that only makes our country even stronger because that's what this country is about. Everybody came in as an immigrant for the dream. So why not have that dream? Right. And if, if, if collectively as a community, we're working for this dream, we will go a lot further than if we individually were working on, on this dream. And that is something that has been discovered through, which is why, you know, building a community and building a tribe is such an important element to a lot of different, you know, ideas and entrepreneurial programs and um, that I have been a, a part of. And I actually, you know, truthfully didn't really connect the dots of the power of community and its benefits of that until, you know, much later on in life where I was like, why are these people trying to build community? I keep talking about family and community and tribes. Yeah. And, and I just took that for granted that I always have had that. I've never felt the need to have to build that. Even when I, you know, moved from um, Los Angeles to Oklahoma, I still found, I never felt lonely and alone because I found an Armenian church. When I moved to Texas, I found an Armenian church. It, I, it almost is embedded that you already have a built-in community no matter where you go. And it is an unspoken, understood acceptance of whoever it is that comes in. Sure. This is something that I've had my entire life. It's been available to me. I had a full built-in community when I moved to Detroit. You know, a, a huge Armenian population and a com- huge support system, even though I was there by myself. So um, I wanted to talk about the importance of that because one, I now value it in a very different way. Um, and two, I want to talk about, you know, for those who are listening, who are not Armenian, who don't understand what we're talking about, there are some things about having that rooted in your life and in your, in your family and in your DNA that are, is second nature. And, people want to replicate that. Can we, do you think we can dig a little bit deeper into what makes that work and why that is, why it's so effective within our, our culture? I'll share one of the things that I, that comes to me when I think about um, what it takes to build a community and, and how to sustain it. Is it, you know, everyone seems to have the same core values. Yeah. You know, that is, I mean, we, we have, um, this next generation of Armenians is absolutely incredible because I've been meeting so many more of the next 20, 30 somethings and they're just incredible. I work with them on, in Nedwish. My team is awesome. They're inspiring. They come up with all the ideas and I think Nedwish is important because we can support them and what they want to do mm-hmm. um, and how they want to bring forth their vision for their future because they really, they truly are. They're very innovative. They're hardworking. And um, some of the things that they're doing is just, just unbelievable. They're fearless. Yeah. And it is, it is something that's within us as Armenians, having gone through um, the genocide and having gone all over the world and our own little communities, we realize how important this is. Um, and almost, I feel like in Los Angeles, because it's such a large community and so the city's so spread out, Mm-hmm. that it's even more important to um, use this avenue to bring our next generation together and to support them. I feel like, you know, it's been such a successful thing that has been in our lives that we have, you know, we've had and we've enjoyed no, no matter where we've been. And of course, there comes a point in your life where you feel like you need to then mentor, you know, the younger generation, which, by the way, thank you for introducing me to Nehruj and being um, involved in the organization. And part of the reason we're having this conversation is because, yes, I'm going to do a shameless plug. Nehruj has an event coming up on the 12th. (laughs) Um, You can't do a uh, in-person event, but you're doing a virtual event. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, Well, we're going to be discussing, and you're one of our panelists, um, how to tell your story, brand yourself, um, not only as a business to sell a product or your, your services, but also as, as someone who's 
venturing off into your career? I mean, how do you sell yourself to your next employer per mm -hmm. se, or sell yourself to your accepted in medical school or law school or any other passion that you have? Um, so it'll be interesting. And I hope like people can join us and they can sign up on our Facebook page. There is a link to sign up. So you get the, uh, Tell us a little bit about what, when, the, when the when the event is and how this event will be held. It's on September twelfth, correct? Right. It is. Correct. It is it's via Zoom. Ten in the morning, via Zoom, and it's at ten in the morning. We picked that time because we've also partnered with um, some students at the American University of Armenia. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll be Saturday evening in Armenia, and they can join in as well. Uh, we're trying to bridge um, that gap between mm -hmm. us and Armenia. So they're all innovative and they have the same needs that we have here. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're trying to be a bridge for Armenians here and Armenians in Armenia, young professionals, emerging professionals, um, college students, for them to have an avenue to learn more and to be, you know, to have the support. That's great. So um, I have a question for you. Um, you know, I have a wide um, array of listenership, not just Armenians. There's a lot of people who listen, not only watch these videos, but also listen to the podcast. Is this exclusive to Armenians? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I okay. mean, Armenians, by nature, I mean, we're warm, hospitable people and any country that we've moved to, we've managed to have a wide array of friends from all sorts of backgrounds. We love learning. We love interacting. We love trying different foods. Um, so I think by our means bettering ourselves as a community, I think just going to spread out and help other communities. Um, so by all means, like everyone's welcome to listen and, and benefit from this because that's what Armenians are about by nature. We're yeah. just very friendly, hospitable people. And for those of you who don't know um, about the Armenian culture, I'm sure you can probably Google it. We there There is an Armenian community in Lebanon and Syria where, of course, you know, Armenians, there are Armenians from Armenia. There are Armenians in Iran, which is where I'm from. There's Armenians in South America, there's Armenians in Africa, there's Armenians in South, I mean, there's Armenians everywhere around the world. And we have been able to hold on to our culture, but also integrate within other communities and other cultures. So we all have a little bit of somewhere else <laughs> in us, right. no matter where we're from, right? So obviously, you know, I listen to Persian music. I eat a lot of Persian food. Um, I have a lot of Persian friends. I understand Persian. And, you know, part of this podcast actually in this show gets aired on the Persian radio station. So, uh, you know, it, there is, it, there's that connection because I feel like no matter where we're from, we're all sort of melded and molded into, in, into who we are. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that our listeners know that if you are looking for something to attend. You are welcome as well. You are not excluded. Absolutely. This is not just about uh, the Armenian event, but also an opportunity for you to maybe learn a little bit about what's happening and about the culture and about who we are and how we actually build a community and help sustain a community. And this was a topic that is actually a lot more significant and important, particularly in these times um, when we are in the middle of a pand pandemic. Now, bringing that back into the focus here, how has community helped you sort of um, manage through these times? Oh, it's kept me going for sure because I'm involved in these groups. I mean, we still have meetings. We're, we're doing fundraising. Um, we just finalized a meeting to help out families at uh, one of the Armenian schools in Pasadena because I'm part of the scholarship fund um, in the archbishop's name. Um, so we're, I mean, it's kept me going to some, I feel like I have some sort of normalcy in my life because mm -hmm. of my community. Thank you for, for being part of my community. I really do appreciate that. You're one of the first people that I connected with. Um, in Los Angeles on this this last go round, and uh, we had been talking about a lot of really great 
in-person plans until um, <laughs> the pandemic decided to interrupt. But thank you for staying in touch and, you know, making me feel like I, I too have a community, obviously, and that's really important. Uh, we hope you got some really great takeaways from this conversation. We hope to see you at the event on September 12th. Um, and we're going to be continuing this conversation with Michael coming up on the next segment. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're continuing this week's conversation. You're listening to the Silva Hara Petion Show. Joining us today, Michael Zakian. He is the owner of Quantum Media, and he is adamant that I not call him an entrepreneur. <laughs> He says he hates that word. <laughs> it makes him feel yeah, more. Yeah, I think it makes you feel, it, 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 it makes me out to be way more important than I am. And uh, I just want to keep things simple. So here's the funny thing about all of that, right? So we are doing an event on September 12th uh, with the organization Neruj. And we're going to be talking about storytelling and promotion and marketing. And here he is talking about how he doesn't want to market himself as an entrepreneur on the podcast and on the show. Come on, man, Michael. I got- save all the good stuff for work and I save all the good stuff for the organizations that I help. No, really, though, I, I, I don't like it. it. It's not something that I don't like promoting myself. Like, um, well, we haven't talked about this, but, you know, I, I do social media marketing as well for, for my business, for, for clients. And our social media page has only one post. I mean, we've been so blessed that I don't need to market us. I don't need to brand us. But that's why I'm listening to you now because I know that I do need to move on that, especially because I am comfortable and we don't need it right now. Yeah. So it is the perfect time to move on. But, that. you know, I mean, I, get, I, get, I give you a hard time. But the reality is when you are doing the work from a very authentic place, and you love what you do promotion is not something that is really in the forefront and you don't really think about it as a business and you don't think you as yourself as an entrepreneur you're just doing and that is the best kind of business to have and the best kind of job to have is because it the driving force is really from the place of passion and i commend you for that and that's you know i mean i'm giving you a hard time but there aren't a lot of people who can do and say what you're doing and still be quite successful at it. So, um, but what I love about what you do is that it's not just about what you do at work. You are also a board member at Nerush. Um, we spoke in the previous segment to Silvana who um, started Nerush. Um, one of the things that we talked about, and I think one of the reasons I really wanted to have this segment was not necessarily the organization itself, but the idea of community that the organization represents And being uh, a young, I'm going to use the word, close your ears, entrepreneur, <laughs> and business owner uh, who happens to be of Armenian descent, who happens to live in Los Angeles, that is kind of the epicenter of the Armenian community. Um, I don't know about you, but for a long, long time, I took this idea of having a built-in community for granted. And it wasn't until I stepped away into a different world and into different cultures and different states that I realized that a lot of people want to build a tribe. A lot of people want to build a community. A lot of people want to have that like-minded support system in place because let's face it, you know, um, things like the pandemic happen and stay home shelters happen and we are extremely isolated. And if you don't have those things already built in, life becomes a lot more difficult than it already is. Talk to me a little bit about whether you've actually consciously thought about the idea of community and whether that actually plays a role in your decision-making process and being so involved. Yeah, I've definitely thought about it. It's something that, you know, I keep going back and forth about since, uh, since I graduated high school. Um, I was blessed to go to an Armenian school, Rosanal Expedivos in Hollywood, and it was so nice to form, uh, without effort, form a community around me. Without effort, form a network of awesome friends for a, a very large group of friends that I, that I keep in touch very often, and uh, it's a very genuine friendship. And over time, 
I've watched my friends grow into this large network of um, entrepreneurs. And, <laughs> you and use the word. They are. Deserve to be called that because they're 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 great at what they do. Um, I don't like to toot my own horn, so I won't talk about me. But they're really, really, really good at what they do. Whether they're lawyers or they're accountants. One of my friends just got his PhD, and he's a tax advisor. One of the tax advisors for Congress, and I'm totally, extremely proud of him. And this community, and I'm not talking about it in a network way, and I'll get into that as well. This community really inspires me. And so I think that's the most important thing about my community of friends, and I haven't even touched on family, but just friends and family, they inspire me. So they make me want to do better continuously. Mm -hmm. And it's effortless for them because they're literally living their lives. They're doing them, and I'm inspired by that. So it's very nice for me to get to experience that. And on top of that, the, the business professionals who we can feed off of each other, you know, I have a lot of friends who, uh, they have side hobbies, they have uh, side businesses that they want to start, they want to branch away from uh, their existing job and maybe jump into an idea. It's very nice to have the community that we have right now where we have a lawyer, we have an accountant, we have somebody who does web design and promotion. So everything is set up for us like mm. in our community. And we're trying to branch that out to friends and family as well of friends and family. So it's 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 nice to build on that community. And, you know, Nerush touches on that. That's like one of my favorite things about Nerush, uh, the networking. Mm. And it's like building a larger family with every event. So it's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about this difference that is in your mind about the idea of networking and the idea of community. Talk to me a little bit about that nuance. Yeah, it's my, it's my um, opinion, of course. So I differentiate both of them. Whenever you first mentioned community, I, I immediately thought of friends and family as a support system. Mm -hmm. Because especially now with the pandemic, um, we need it. We're not able to see everybody. We're not able to go to the larger parties. For the most part, a lot of us are still staying in. We're not able to go to those things. and We're not able to be social. So it's so nice to have a group of friends, your community, and a group, that includes family as well, um, to be in constant contact with. It's, it almost keeps normalcy during this crazy time. Mm. It... it, it keeps everything going and I differentiate that from networking because I associate networking with business like that's a very businessy word we have networking events so we could pass out business cards and share emails and uh, phone numbers but you know it's developed into a little bit of both yeah you know building a community is one thing sustaining a community is a whole other thing what do you think that we as Armenians do so well that helps us sustain a community and become a community wherever we go. And every time I think about this, I think about the Soroyan comment of, you know, put two Armenians anywhere in the world and you've got yourself a new Armenia, right? And that is yeah. so incredibly true and it's been true in my life. And literally, no matter where I've been and where I've ended up, there's always been a built-in community already and I've already automatically been welcome into that. So I've experienced yeah. that firsthand. What do you think we do right that helps sustain that over generations? Sharing and caring. I really think that's a big thing. I always, um, the smaller picture of it, not, not the larger picture of it, the smaller picture of it for me is breaking bread. Um, really, for me, it's a huge thing. That builds community and that expands community. You invite somebody to your house, to whatever it is, you break bread with somebody, no matter if they're Armenian or not, they're likely going to be an addition to your community after mm -hmm. a few times. But what I've experienced is how sharing my community is, how caring my community is, and that includes how supportive they are. Um, and I think those are the most important factors for me. I think that's what helps keep it going effortlessly. You don't have to be... Um, you know, I, I thought about this a lot, and I thought about 
the, the formula. I always try to break down stuff into formula. I always try to look at stuff like data and break it down and try to really see if I can recreate that formula, have the perfect formula for every scenario. I can in this. I, I cannot. The, it just comes with time and support. And well, I have. Health. I actually have a theory I'd, I'd like to bounce off of you and see how how much you agree. Um, I think this is true, particularly not just for Armenians, but I think this is true um, for a lot of different regions, but more so than more so. I'm trying to be politically correct here, but maybe I should just remember that this is my own show and I can say whatever the f I want. I'm going to have to bleep this out, That's but whatever. Right. So That's here it goes. Right. It's true in some communities more than others, okay? So in the Armenian community, it's true. In the Middle Eastern communities, it's true. It's a more culturally uh, family-oriented communities that function on the idea of a we rather than an I. Yes. So... Yeah. Those communities tend to do better because it is all about how could we collectively be better? How could we collectively do better? How could we collectively rise, rise and rise, each, raise each other up, right? So mm -hmm. I think those communities, and I say that family-oriented communities because automatically when you're a child and you grow up in, those, in that kind of an environment, you're already programmed to think in terms of we. And therefore, even when, uh, for example, I was all by myself in a city where I didn't know anyone, my group of peers became my family and my group of peers became my community. And the way I used to actually make that happen is I used to have dinner parties in my house. Going back to yeah. you breaking bread, right? Making food b to be the thing that connects us, that brings us together, and is all about the we and not about just it's the very I. Primal. Right? Yeah, agree. So I think when we, and I, the other thing that has become clear during this pandemic and during challenging times where we all sort of find ourselves sort of fighting the same fight in a maybe a, a rare variation of that fight mm -hmm. it makes us feel like a we which is why yeah. the phrase we are in this together how many times have you heard that from the beginning of the pandemic we oh, are wow. right like we, nice. this is all of us at the same place at the same yeah. time it has created this community struggle of we're all fighting this thing together. So exactly. every single one of us matters in this fight. Right. So I, I like talking about this because I know that a lot of people listen to this podcast and they listen to the show and you may not be Armenian, but you know, this is for my Middle Eastern friends. This is for my African friends. This is for my Persian friends. This is for my Lebanese friends. This is from, this is from this is this is all about if family is your core value and your core value begins with the sentence we then you understand the need and the desire for community and if you stick to yes. those very things and make those things your priority building a community then becomes about building relationships definitely and it's it's such a big thing like i was mentioning i, I slipped in uh, primal into it so a part of my to help build my marketing strategy and development strategy, because we are trying to appeal to different human beings, I read a lot of behavioral psycho uh, psychological books, whether they're textbooks or they're like God Saad, who's a, a Lebanese psychologist, uh, talks a lot about behavioral psychology. Mm -hmm. And it really goes to, they all revert back to our primal needs. Now we talked about breaking bread, we talked about we, um, the, the we pertains to, to this uh, need to be social and need to, like, if, if you think about it, back when cavemen existed, they needed to be social. They needed to, to form herds so they can survive better, so they could hunt better, gather better, share, and survive better. So it's something that's deeply encoded in, in, into us. And um, it's so nice to see how it can still be outlined today and 
how it's still a necessity for us that community is such a big thing yeah and you know it, it's still true all of these things that we're talking about it's we're talking about cultural and we talk about primal we're talking about cavemen we talk about history we talk about generations but this is these are conversations that aren't new in the entrepreneurial world right this is Definitely. i hear this all the time about you know groups and masterminds and building communities and building tribes it's all about building a support system where it can be all about we and you know um and again, going back to being so fortunate to already have a built-in community, no matter where I went, that doesn't mean you can't build other ones. It just means that this one has existed. And doing so, I want to, hey, you know what? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite all of our listeners who might, might not even be Armenian to come join us at the Neruj event on September 12th. It is, uh, we're going to do a panel about marketing and storytelling and media and uh, the power of it and how to promote yourself. Michael. <laughs> and, it's a good point. I'm taking you up on this. I agree. And, and, and how not, uh, not to be uncomfortable being promotional, right? How to, how to do it without feeling sleazy, how to do it authentically. And we're going to be talking about all of that. The beauty of this is that it's going to be virtual. So you can register from wherever you are in the world. And in fact, we have some Armenian students from the Armenian Uni University joining us, right, Michael? Yes, I've invited a few. I've told them to tell their friends as well. And I'm hoping as many of them uh, as possible can make it. It'd be so awesome to get this message across to so many people and just promote this series in a way where um, we are authentic and we want to make sure that we get across, just like you were saying, uh, I even jotted that down and we should touch on that during the event. Um, and I'm glad you brought it up. Authentic way to promote yourself yeah. is so, so, so big. Yeah. So this is our invitation to you. Come join our community uh, and uh, be part of the, the group. And there's obviously support system and, um, you know, bouncing of ideas. Um, we'll be taking lots of questions. So yes. um, I will make sure that all of this information in the registration page is available for everyone who wants to who wants to do that. Um, so it'll be on the bottom of the YouTube page. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be on the text in the text of the podcast. If you if you're listening to this on a podcast, and if you're listening to this um, on the radio, then um, you know. Go go take take a look at it on on the Facebook page on the radio station Facebook page. I'll be I'll make sure all of that is available. So um, yeah, I think I think it's so incredibly important to have a sense of community today. Um, we are isolated. I have heard incredibly sad stories of people who um, feel incredibly lonely um, and hopeless in these times because. They're not close to their family or they don't have a community or they don't have a support system. And we want to tell you that, you know, communities exist and we are here for you no matter who you are and where you're from. Um, all you have to do is reach out and tell us what you need and what you're all about. And if you've been in um, any of our presence, you know that we are hospitable and loving people. So um, I am so proud of that when it comes to our culture. And I recognize the importance of, of that now um, in terms of being able to have, you know, people to call and people to Zoom with and people to have a glass of wine with over Zoom in these trying times. So um, how, is that, how has that helped you through these challenging few months? It's been interesting, you know, before all get an understanding of limitations and our restrictions um we had birthdays in march we had birthdays in april and may and it was it was hard for us so we all had to jump on for the time being get used to that way of life and it was very nice for us to to, to be able to do that yeah yep. so i really love that i really enjoyed that um we're still doing a lot of that it's it's become something where it's our new norm right now and that's okay and i'm i'm very appreciative that they're still there on the other side of that and they're still willing to do that and just like you said we're all in this together and it's it's 
supportive of our community no matter. I want to thank Michael for joining us and I hope to see you on September 12th for this event and I hope that you think a little bit more about what community means to you and how would you how would you build a community and how would you like to be part of a community? I think we need that in these times more than ever. In the meantime, this has been another edition of the Silvahara Petty on Show. We hope you join us next week. <laughs>